Welcome back for another video where I use myself as a guinea pig so that you can learn what to do, what not to do, and what just might be a waste of your time. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about Datis Karazian's veggie mashup. First, to set the stage with story time just for a moment, Datis Karazian is a pretty big deal in the functional medicine space. He's been teaching and I have been attending his lectures for well over a decade. And I've noticed in recent years, he has done a distinct nutritional 180 and he's now emphasizing the crap, pun intended, out of nutritional diversity, particularly plant diversity. And that's because we have really good quality evidence now that nutritional diversity, particularly the diversity in the plant foods you eat from week to week, directly correlates with how diverse or how healthy your microbiome is going to be. I'm going to link a particularly cool paper down below. It's a 2018 article titled American Gut, an open platform for citizen science microbiome research. And they looked at stool testing and nutritional information for 10,000 people. And they deduced, as other studies have, that the more diverse the plant foods you eat, the more diverse your microbiome. And a lot of you already know that a diverse microbiome is one of the best indicators for overall health. And having good microbiome diversity is associated with a lower risk of a multitude of diseases, particularly inflammatory and chronic diseases. So Datis, among others, probably took note of that. And he has been emphasizing diversity in his teachings, which I super love. And one part of that has really caught my attention. And I thought it would be really fun to do an experiment. And that is the veggie mashup. So the idea goes like this. He says, go to the grocery store or better yet, go to like an ethnic market or an Asian grocery store with a lot of foods that you normally would not eat and just buy one of everything from the produce section. Go buy one of everything and you take it home and you chop it up into little teeny tiny bits, maybe pulse it with a food processor a little bit. You're just trying to get little teeny tiny nibble sized, little bite sized chunks of the stuff. And then you're going to take that mix it all together into this mashup, as he calls it. And then you're going to freeze it into little portions. And every single day you take out a portion of this stuff and you eat that. And now you can basically, you could claim that you're getting all of these nutritional points. You're getting all these diversity points, if you will, because you have eaten, say, if you put 30 different vegetables into your veggie mashup and you're eating that most days of the week, you can now say that you're getting a portion, maybe not a full serving size, but you're getting a portion of 30 different vegetables every week, plus whatever you're getting through your diet. And that's going to be really helpful for your microbiome diversity. And I thought that sounds like a cool experiment to do. I want to try it out. My diversity could use a little bit of help because of all the antibiotics I've had in my lifetime. Why the heck not? So that is what we're going to embark on. So let me show you a couple layers of nerdy, nerdy data, and then we're going to talk about what it actually did and was it worth it from a microbiome standpoint. So let me go ahead and give myself a head bubble first. So first off, I just wanted to show you that this is, uh, this is the schedule of when I took the veggie mashup uh, product. I actually called it my veggie mush. Um, so you can see I did my first two stool tests for this experiment, or three rather, sorry. I did the first three on Halloween and November 1st. Then I think I actually went to the grocery store and bought all the supplies somewhere in here and I prepped it over the weekend. And then I started consuming the veggie mashup product on November 8th. And you can see that mostly throughout the two months or so that I was doing this, I was mostly good about taking it during the work week. And then on the weekends, I kind of slacked off. But you can see I definitely took it for the better part of the two months. And then at the end of December and the beginning of January, I was taking two servings in one day just because I figured go big or go home. And then I did my remaining stool samples for the post stool sampling part of the project. I did those on Monday and Wednesday, January 2nd and January 4th. Of note, I might have extended this just a couple more weeks and I might have been like more diligent about taking it every single day, but I was gearing up to have my ear surgery on this day, on the 17th, and I wanted to give myself a runway of doing some stuff specifically to prep for the surgery. So I didn't want any new supplements or new interventions to mess with the data I was collecting for this project. And I, I kind of just wanted to conclude this project before I started prepping my body for my surgery. So that's a little, little side note. Um, it wasn't quite two months, but it was pretty close. So I'm going to give myself credit. Now, 
Uh, let's look at nutritional data because one difficulty about doing this type of experiment is that our diets vary from day to day, week to week, month to month, and season to season. And I was a little bit concerned that my eating uh, tends to be a little bit seasonal. And I was worried that it would throw off the data that I was collecting. But if you could see, so this is a chronometer report for the month before the first stool test. So this was October through 3rd through November 1st or 2nd. And you could see there's my macros. And then the month prior to the second collection, virtually the same. Like little tiny bit of shifty shifty going on here, but really not bad considering that I wasn't watching it all that closely. Uh, it kind of lends itself to show you how consistently I eat and how consistent I am with like macros and calories uh, without a ton of effort. Then scrolling down a bit, really probably the most important data point in all of this is how consistent the fiber was. So again, let's look. This was the month prior to the first stool collection and I was eating about 114% of the daily value for fiber. And on the, the month prior to the second collection, 115. Mic drop, baby. That is as good as it gets, but wait, is it? Now let's zoom in on the week prior to the first and second collection. So week prior, here are my macros. Week prior to the second collection, here's my macros. Fairly similar, considering that the week prior to the collection, we had company in from out of town. We were eating out at restaurants way more. And it was, this did encompass Halloween. And I did have some candy on Halloween. And then the second collection, this encompasses the new year. And I did have some Christmas cookies and new year treats. So all things said and done, I'm shocked that it was this good. And then coming down here for fiber, boom. For both the week prior to the first collection and the week prior to the second collection, my fiber consumption quanti quantity-wise was dead on, 132% of the daily value of fiber. Bam. I couldn't have planned that better if I tried. And amazingly, I did not try. I wasn't being explicitly cognizant of this. I was just eating the way I normally eat. So I thought that was pretty stinking cool. So I point this out because I want to share that I don't think my diet outside of the veggie mashup was influencing the results that we're about to look at to a large degree. I think for the most part, the results are going to be attributed to the veggie mashup. And it's worth noting, I didn't change any supplements or introduce any new herbs or supplements or add like other strategies into my life at this time either. So now let's go into some of the poop tests. All right. So remember, there's three samples for each time frame. So we're going to look at samples one, two, and three. And then I'm going to show you samples four, five, and six. So here's sample number one. What I want to draw your attention to for this conversation is that we have two measurements for diversity. Really, what we're looking at mostly is going to be alpha diversity. That's what we're most interested in here. And that's what looks a little bit ugh on me. Uh, beta diversity is basically a measurement of how typical the microbes you possess are compared to your peers. So if they were to sample somebody in the continental United States, they would probably expect to find very similar microbes compared to what they saw in my sample. So that's what beta diversity is looking at. I didn't really expect to have new microbes introduced to my system. I was more so hoping to feed the ones that I already had. So beta diversity, it's neat. It did go up a little bit, but I don't think it's super noteworthy. So we're going to focus our conversation on this number, on the alpha diversity. And you can see that from this stool sample, they give you ranges of like green being great, red being woof, and then the, the spectrum in the middle where it's like, eh, it could be better, it could be worse. So you can see I'm pretty firmly in that could be better, could be worse category. So this was my Monday sample from the first round of sampling. Then this is Tuesday number one, which looks worse. And Tuesday number two, which actually that looks a little bit better. And the average for alpha diversity from this time period is 3.7. So on average from the three samples, my alpha diversity would be like right about there. 3.763 actually, for those of you who are nerds for this sort of stuff. Now moving on to the post 
experimental uh, collection. So this is the first sample in the new year that I did. So this would have been on, I think I said the 2nd of January. And we could see alpha diversity 2.59, alpha diversity 5.75, that's actually pretty decent, and 4.51. And the average between those three is 4.283. So again, if we were to draw it on here somewhere, that would place us right about there. So from the, the numbers that I just spouted out, so remember the average for the first group of three tests, so I took the average between the three, that number was 3.763. And then in this group, the average was 4.283. So it did go up a bit. And again, keep in mind that we're, we're taking the average of three samples. So I think that this is decent enough quality data that I'm gonna say, yeah, it did make my alpha diversity go up a bit. Was it monumental? No. Was it worth it? Maybe. Uh, here, let me take myself off head mode here. Hold on. So, you know, from, from the perspective of, is this worth it? Should I do this? Maybe, maybe, right? Like if you are a person who normally eats a pretty good amount of fiber, as I do, if you're a person who eats plenty of vegetables and fruits and whole grains, and you have dietary diversity built into your life anyway, my guess is that you would see something close to what I just observed, which is it didn't do a tremendous amount. It, it maybe moved me just a smidge. But again, I eat lots of fiber. I eat lots of plant foods. I eat lots of herbs and spices. I'm doing a lot with my diet already that would increase my diet, my microbiome diversity. So maybe I'm close to maxing out what my system is capable of, given my microbiome and my history with antibiotics, versus if we took somebody who had very, very poor nutritional diversity, and then we had them do this exact same experiment, it might be way more profound. So again, try to answer the question, is it worth it? Should you do this? Again, if you eat enough fiber and you eat a lot of plant foods, my guess is that it probably won't change things profoundly for you. But if you are not consuming a lot of vegetables and fruit and whole grains and you're not getting enough fiber, this might actually make a big difference. In my mind, I'm going to reserve this recommendation for one group of people in particular. It's the people who say they don't like vegetables, right? Like I've, I've had some of those people before, even recently, where we, t you know, there was one patient in particular, he said, I will take whatever pill or potion or herb you tell me to do. I don't know if I'm going to eat like tons of broccoli and cauliflower and kale in my life. I just don't know if I'm going to do it. I really hate vegetables. And when I brought up the idea of doing this veggie mashup and like batch prepping it once every month or two, and just eating a portion of it every day, and then also just trying to be more mindful of fiber and vegetable intake in his diet, he felt like that was much more obtainable, much more appealing. And that was something he could really wrap his head around and sink his teeth into. So I think for the people who don't like vegetables and they otherwise would refuse to eat a lot of vegetables, I think that this veggie mashup is wonderful. For the people who are eating very few plant foods to begin with, it could be good with the acknowledgement that oftentimes those folks are not eating a lot of plant foods because they cause symptoms. And you might find that even doing a little bit of this veggie mashup could cause symptoms at the beginning. So that might be something you need to explore for yourself and deem whether or not it's something you can do. Um, but again, if you eat a healthy diet, if you eat a lot of fiber and have nutritional diversity built into your diet already, I don't know if this is going to be super profound for you. It was a super fun experiment and it was fun busting out my veggie mush every day and threatening my husband and my seven-year-old and telling them that I was going to make them eat some of it with me. Um, I probably just going to finish off the cubes that I have in the freezer now and then probably not do it again just because I already get the diversity in my diet. So are you going to do it? Are you going to try it? If you do, please, 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 please come back here to this YouTube video and leave a comment down below and let us know how it went. I'm curious if it helped you with symptoms, if it was enjoyable, if you felt like it worked in some way. And if you want to be a super nerd and do stool testing pre and post, that would just be icing on the cake. But I would acknowledge I don't expect everybody to drop like $1,500 on stool testing just to prove if this is a useful thing or not. So if you don't want to do that, I totally understand. Um, but yeah, I'm just curious, have, had you heard about this 
prior to my making a video about it? Had you tried it already? And have you noticed that increasing your dietary diversity has been helpful for your IBS or SIBO symptoms? I know in my clients and my students that I work with in FODMAP Freedom, I have definitely, definitely seen that to be the case. Sometimes it's slow going in the beginning when your gut is really vulnerable, or if you're not used to eating a lot of fiber or a lot of plant foods, but it is worth the effort. It is going to pay you back with dividends and you can join the high diversity club and minimize your risk of all sorts of diseases if you do that. So please uh, at least take that message home with you that dietary diversity is one of the best things you can do for your microbiome. And if you're watching this channel, you probably want a healthy microbiome. So I hope that that at least sticks with you, whether or not you choose to do the veggie mashup or just incorporate more diversity into your diet anyway. Hey guys, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe, ring the bell, click the like button, and leave a comment down below with the videos that you would like to see me do next. Doing all of those really helps support the channel and support my efforts in making as many videos as possible for you guys. Thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next video.